This is Twit. I should point out this uh, story from the MIT Technology Review from a couple of days ago. Google's Deep Mind has just recently, you know, one of the things we thought AI LLMs couldn't do is math. And this was a big issue earlier on. And Stephen Wolfram wrote an article saying, well, let you ought to use Wolfram Alpha in conjunction with an AI so you can actually do math. DeepMind used a large language model to solve a math problem that has been unsolved mm. f for centuries. Um, that's a big deal. So uh, DeepMind actually ended up writing a Python um, code, a Python script that solved a fundamental math and a computer science problem yeah um, I, th I think that's didn't a big he try deal. and create didn't he try and create the code that could solve solve it like it, i don't i don't did it solve the problem or did it create code that it could create solve a code the that did solve the problem yeah in a and paper published in so nature great. on december 14th researchers say it's the first time a large i'm reading from the mit technology review a large language model has been used to discover a solution to a long-standing scientific puzzle, and this is the key phrase, remember this, producing verifiable and valuable new information that did not previously exist. It wasn't in the training data. It wasn't known. Now, this is very significant because up to now, we've assumed LLMs are simply repackaging material that's scraped from the net in a new form, but not inventing. You know, we talked about uh, how you would judge and artificial general intelligence. You know, it's one thing to to, uh, to analyze a movie and say what the, you know, the emotional threads were in this movie because it's seen a lot of reviews of the movie. But what if it was a movie no one had ever seen before? Could it do the same thing? Well, now for the first time, we have proof that an LLM can, in fact, create new material. Mm. That is a huge... I, that busts a lot of things that were reassuring people about LLMs. It is a major step towards artificial general intelligence. And and what's interesting to me is this is happening rapidly as we speak. It's yeah. they're starting to write code. This friend I was talking to yesterday said, I don't write code anymore. He said, uh, I have Chat GPT. I said, You use Copilot, which is the GitHub solution. No, he said, I just have Chat GPT write it. I'll vet it. You know, and I'll, I might change things and a few things, but I don't, I don't, he says, people aren't going to, I said, do I, I said, I'd like to learn how to code this stuff. He says, don't, <laughs> you don't need to, mm -hmm. you, people uh, will not be coding. Well, he also, now, by the way, this guy, a long time, well, but Leo. this guy's they've working directly in it. Uh, he's, he's got a computer science and an EE degree. Uh, he, he knows he's, he's, he's immersed in this stuff. He's an accelerationist. Now, I have to say, there are different groups around all of this now. And the accelerations are the most bullish. Their point of view is this. By the way, this is it was a great article we talked about last week from the New York Times uh, from 2015. It was just before, it was why OpenAI was founded. Larry Page, Elon Musk sitting around a campfire up here in Napa at a, at a retreat with a bunch of other people watching on. And, and Larry Page pitching the future of AI. And Elon saying, well, what about humans? you got to protect humans. we got to think about safety. To which Larry says, Elon, you're a speciesist. You're, this is a new species. You're, you're, you, are, you are defending humans against the next thing. You're a speciesist. Elon, to which Elon turned around, started OpenAI with the plan of being safe, by the way. That was the reason for OpenAI. And never spoke to Larry Page again. But Larry yeah. represents a very, I think, a significant portion of AI researchers, scientists, big thinkers who actually think, now this is what I was going to say. Yes, you said I was a pessimist, right? Uh, maybe I still am a pessimist. I don't know. We've gone through five years of doldrums in technology, right? It's just been yep. nothing. And, you know, the big stories were, oh, cryptocurrency? Give me a break, you know? Uh, ransomware? That's that's a high, happy subject. Uh and so for me as a technology journalist, it's been, it's been tough. It's been like, I, can I get excited about the, the new feature in the iPhone 15? Well, now we have a technology that is actually about to, I think, and I'm, well, at least I think it's a possibility. I'm not sure, but I think it's about to change things more dramatically than the internet or personal computing. 
that is about to change things dramatically. My friend said, this is a new species. This is first contact. This is an intelligence that we are creating that is going to, and he said the next 10 years are going to be, these were his words exactly, really weird. I think that's how Demis Hassabis described AlphaGo. He said there was a move, was it move 37? Um, that's right. When he was playing Lisa Doll. That's right. And he said it, it, it plays like it's an, an alien. human like, move. Yeah. It was the right move. It was a brilliant move, but it, no human would ever play it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's fascinating because it's basically looking at something that is not being confined by the limitations that we put on ourselves when we're solving problems that only a machine can do, partly because it can try so many of them um, and see which ones work. But I agree, it's it, it's very different. I, I, I want to come back to something you were saying earlier, Leo. You know, we have been we have been proclaiming the end of coders for my entire career, right? I heard this in the 90s. I heard it about 10 years ago, and I'm hearing it now. And, you know, what I think, at least what I see, is for really high-level tasks, yeah, you can pump out, like, some crappy spaghetti code, right? But if you're working on a team for a lot of people, what are the skills that are going to make you able to thrive long-term in computer science? Right. It's documenting your codes. So other people can use it. It's the ability to pick up new, you know, like you know, work with new technologies and apply them. Um, and it's optimization. I cannot tell you how many times like I've had a friend who's had to go into some crappy code base. Right. And refactor. It, but right. Do, but These are, this is this, the bread. Brianna, hold don't on, you see hold this? On, let just... me finish what I'm saying. Okay. Um, so I, I think that the skills that we are going to see especially as like if you look at the the way apple has gone right so much of getting metal to work and so much of making your battery life last for a long time on a mac is about code optimization right and processor optimization and i just i don't accept i i think that there's going to be a place for this but i do think it's going to look more like copilot and i think someone like your friend with all respect i don't know him personally but i think if he's not willing to write his own code is just going to generate it out I don't think he's going to have a long career and I don't think he's going to solve interesting problems. Just flat out. David? Don't you see this as really just an evolutionary step? Let's no. think yeah. about the history of No, coding. it's not evolution. It's revolution. Well, no, but it is it. But we, in evolution, we have hockey stick moments. This is a hockey stick moment. Yeah. For no, so it's not evolutionary it. like, in the sense we that went it's from kind of line item nice coding smooth. to object oriented and, and 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 lots of things, and then that we have we have code bases like GitHub where we can take snippets of code that other people have done. Now we're the next evolutionary step, and yes, it is revolutionary, but it is an evolutionary step. It still needs to be managed. That's the, the big thing. Everything still needs to be managed because, like you know, like anything, you need to give it some kind of direction. So. It is going to require a type of wizard. The thing, though, I, I feel like you guys are buggy whip makers saying, but they'll always need a horse, right? We'll always no, need a horse. No, I don't horse. believe they will need a horse. <laughs> no, I would think like if I was an artist right now, I'd be very scared for my profession because of of the you know Dolly and Mid Journey about how amazing. I'm almost the saying generation that of those that's it. That you that's the least of your worries. He no, no, said, but I'm just for instance, I'm pointing one he said, example out. He said, no, I understand. But the problem is there's not going to be any money in five years. There's not there is a very there is such a massive shift. Now, I, I'm not, I'm believe me, I'm not convinced of this, but I think it's a very interesting proposition that I don't think is far fetched. There may be such a massive shift ahead. Yeah, of course, artists are worried. You know what? We don't even know what it's going to look like in ten years, and that's I'll what, just and, point and out. That's really what's well, interesting. Well, if you look at the to me, the most visual representation is these image generating programs like Mid Journey and Dolly. I mean, I was introduced to it. Actually, Deep it was Mind a just solved a scientific a proof ago. that did not know was unsolvable. That no one it came up with something no one had thought of before. That's to me more that's than powerful. I'm going to make a drawing based on you know five thousand images I've ingested. That's very different. I think there's a... Nate, what do you think? 
Well, I was just going to say, um, it's funny that you mention artists because my wife is an artist. Her job is is a designer and illustrator. And she has asked me a lot this year about AI. She's very interested in it for all the reasons you would expect. And I've been trying to explain to her that in this, in a weird sort of way, all you need to do is stay one step ahead of the people with no talent. Because as long as you've got talent and you've got some, you've got some it. skill, then you're always going to be at an, at an advantage compared to the person who has no skill and relies on the AI. And I'll give you a couple of examples that I'm basically just paraphrasing from, from her, which is apparently in the, a bunch of subreddits um, around Photoshop and Illustrator and Firefly and all this sort of thing, there are people who are trying to find out what what style of art something is because they've created something using AI and they need to justify what it is. So they're having to go to forums to ask, what is this thing that I have created, which is such a weird world to live in. But she's like, it really underscores where the difference is now between people with access to these tools and people who can, who, who can use it and do use it, but don't need to use it. And Ooh. it is being able to communicate what you have done, why you have done it, how you can improve it, why it's right, why it's wrong, why could it be better? And for a professional right now, the advantage is almost entirely still in their court because the people who just want to do something quickly, there's no adapting and there's very little ability to dif differentiate yourself from anybody else who can do exactly the same thing right now, currently. That, as you say, will all change. We don't know what it'll look like in five years or 10 years. But if you are just paying attention to this stuff, not seeing it as a threat, as an enemy. Um, and this is what Kate's doing, is looking at these tools, playing with them, trying them out, incorporating bits. And it's a tool like anything else when I've seen her learning to use Photoshop or Illustrator or Procreate, using an iPad instead of a tablet on a desktop or using both or using one for sketching and then using the other one for a, for a final thing. Like it's about moving something into a workflow that that works for you. And I feel that what I've seen from my limited perspective is that the people who embrace that are at least at a lower risk of having their lunches eaten than people who don't. What your wife needs to prove is that she, an artist with an AI uh, image generating tool, can operate better than me or somebody else who has no artistic talent using the same AI tool. Yeah. That is the edge she needs to have. And if she yeah. has it, then she can work. But the question is, can I, with no artistic talent whatsoever, produce the same results as her? Probably not because she has a more designer eye than I have. But that's essentially the edge that she would need to have. Yeah, absolutely. And the conversations that come up between whether it's employers or clients, you know, well, or could we tweak this? Can we change that? Oh, yeah, this is a good start, but actually we'd, we'd quite like something a bit more like this, or it needs to fit in these templates, or, oh, the, the printer sent back a different dimension, or there's no bleed around the edges, all these little tiny things that someone who doesn't fundamentally understand how to change or alter their image or their product, like they can't do that unless they potentially paid a lot of attention to prompt engineering and understanding how to be iterative and seeing generative AI as, as a journey and not just you type in what you want and you get but, it. It's, but that it's again iterative. requires your wife to know the skill of these tools. And these yeah. tools are getting complex. Like, for example, I noticed one thing that MidJourney does now is you can create like a style template, if you will, and apply it to a whole series of images. So if there's a style you've created you like, and you want to create multiple images in that style, there's essentially you generate a code and you can attach it to all of that. I mean, that's extraordinarily powerful new version that it has. I yeah. Mean, and, and these I, are the I visually see the generate. I mean, I agree with you, Leo. A great, like the fact that this has created something out of whole cloth that has never been seen before, the sort of the solving of the code. I agree with you. But the the visual representation of these image generating tools, me personally watching Mid Journey over the past year, a little over year and a half, how much it's progressed in that period of time has become quite astonishing. 
Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. Invest in your current workforce and fortify your business's future. Your whole team will love to be entertained while they train. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. Twit listeners can receive up to 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan after completing their form. Based on your team's size, you'll receive a properly quoted discount tailored to your needs. 